probably the biggest reason why us women struggle with the idea of staying home and being a full-time mom or full-time homemaker is just the reality that yes, less money is coming in. And nowadays with everything so expensive and with life so set up to live on two incomes, I feel like as a homemaker, we're constantly having to figure out ways to save money. And so today I'm really excited to be sharing with you 12 different ways that have really helped us cut down a bit on unnecessary spending and just ways to save money. So, I'll try not to make this video too, too long winded because I have a lot of points I need to get through. I did want to mention though that when I'm looking at these shots that I got, I hate the outfit that I'm wearing because this blouse that I was wearing has these ruffles and it makes my belly look really big with this apron over top. But I don't have time to refill. So with that being said, vanity out of the way, let's jump in. So my first tip is more of mindset, and this is probably what cuts down on about 90% of my personal unnecessary spending. And that is, I always think, is this item worth my husband's time he's going to have to put into making money to pay for this? And like I said, about 90% of the time I decide, you know what, it's not worth my husband's time. You know what, I would rather be spending time with him than having to buy whatever this unnecessary item is and having him have to work more to pay for it. So that's a tip of mine that I wanted to share with you that's more of a mindset thing, but it really helps me cut down on unnecessary spending. Okay, tip number two kind of has a few different facets I wanna cover really quick, but it is food. So the first tip that I wanna give you that I heard on a podcast that I was like, wait, that is so smart and that's what I do is to go around the outside of the grocery store when you're shopping. Don't go down all those middle aisles that are filled with processed, pre-made foods that are unnecessary. And this will really cut down on buying foods that aren't whole foods. We basically only eat dairy, meat, vegetables, and fruit. That's pretty much our entire diet. And I've noticed on the weeks that I go down those middle aisles, my food bill gets a lot more expensive. The next thing involving food is that I like to have a food budget. I aim to spend $100 on food and household items a week for the three of us, which is definitely very doable. But I have found that if rather than going shopping every week, I go shopping every other week and I just buy extra dairy, I can actually cut down my second week's bill of food by about $25 and I really don't notice a difference with having way less food than the week before. And the next thing that I wanted to add that's also in the topic of foods is to buy healthy food. Up front, yes, the reality is it is more expensive, but down the road, it cuts down so much money in dental bills and just your overall health. It gives you more energy so you can get more done. You have a longer life expectancy rate. And so for those reasons in and of themselves, I think it is actually saving you money long term to buy healthier food. The last food related tip that I wanted to share with you is to freeze your leftovers. I've been doing this a lot lately because I don't really like eating leftovers, especially like more than once or twice, but it's such a waste to let them just go bad in your fridge. And so I've been freezing them, pulling them out a couple months later. And like yesterday, I pulled out a bag of frozen soup and it was delicious. It was like opening up a can, but it cost me no extra money. I didn't have to eat a leftover that I wasn't in the mood for a day after I cooked it, and it didn't get thrown away and get wasted. So that's my last food tip for you. Next, this is gonna sound a little strange, but as a woman, I'll see things that a friend is wearing, or I'll be looking on Pinterest, or I'll watch a YouTube video on style, and I'll just all of a sudden get this craving to go out and buy a new outfit or a new dress or a new shirt or something that really I don't actually need, but it sounds fun to just go out and buy it and splurge. So this tip is gonna sound a little bit weird, but I will go on Amazon or I will go on Poshmark or I will go on some online clothing store or maybe it's some piece of home decor I wanna buy, but I don't actually need. And I will shop online, I will put it in my cart and then I will not pay for it. And I'll wait, and typically, if I wait a couple of days, I'll come back and be like, I don't even like that, or I don't even need that. And I'm less encouraged to just go out and emotionally buy something I don't actually need. And 
typically about 95% of the time, I don't end up buying the item, but for some reason, just having the fun of shopping for it, putting it in the cart, kind of fills up that little urge without actually having to spend any money. And a couple days later, I'll just take it back out of the cart and delete my order. So that's a weird tip, but it actually does seem to work for me quite well when I wanna spend something I don't actually need. The next thing that I think almost all women want is just a nice home, a place that is fun to take care of, a place, a place that is fun to love, and yet that can be really, really expensive. And so my next tip, tip number four, is to just start doing tons of DIY projects. Basically, all of our furniture in our house we have not bought new, we've bought it used on Marketplace or from people that we know that are selling it. And so we've just painted it or we've added new knobs or we've done different things to kind of upgrade it without having to spend the money of new furniture. And that saved us a good deal of money because new furniture is so expensive. Also, you can use sheets to sew curtains. You can do so many different things to save a lot of money and still have that home that you really, really like, that you're proud of, that feels up to date, and it doesn't have to cost tons and tons of money. And I think that's really wonderful. Okay, number five is to cancel all those unnecessary subscriptions. There are so many stupid things over the years that I have paid for on the whim and then realized like years later that every month I've been paying $10 for some stupid subscription I don't even use. At one time, these were some dumb vitamins. At another time, this was Spotify Premium. So many different things that ultimately I end up stopping using and yet I realize years later, I'm still paying for them. So cut down on those subscriptions, get rid of them all. Tip number six is to buy, especially your children, secondhand clothes. This has saved us so much money with my daughter, Caroline. I think I've bought in her in the last year, maybe two clothing items, brand new, and those were for Christmas gifts. And then everything else has been secondhand or has been given to us. And wow, that saves so, so much money. You can buy almost an entire wardrobe for the price of one item new. And Big deal if they're a little bit worn out. Oftentimes they're not though. You can find really nice used stuff. But even so, little kids are rough on clothes. And so I don't, I'm not at all bothered by buying secondhand used clothes for my daughter. It works really, really well. Tip number seven I wanted to throw in here really quick if you're pregnant and expecting a baby. We really didn't do a baby shower for my daughter Carrie because we had such a small house. We had a lot of the items we needed. The only thing I really asked for was diapers. And so for the first five or six months of my daughter's life, I didn't have to buy diapers. And that was amazing. And that saves you a lot of money because especially when you have a newborn baby, believe me, you change their diaper so much. So that was a game changer and saved us a lot of money and a lot of time going out buying diapers. Tip number eight is to learn to cut your own hair, learn to cut your husband's hair, learn to cut your children's hair. Growing up, my mom cut all of us kids' hair and there were six of us kids. And so that saved a lot of money. My husband is a fireman. He likes to keep his hair really short. And if it weren't for either him or myself cutting his hair, he would have to go out and pay, you know, 10, 20 bucks every probably two weeks to get his hair cut, which is just such a waste because it's really so simple. I have curly hair, which is very forgiving, so I cut my own hair. I've actually maybe once got it cut at a salon. And I mean, it's so simple. I don't do anything crazy with my hair and it saves a lot of money just cutting it myself. My next tip for you, tip number nine, is to learn to take cheap or free dates. And for my husband and I, sometimes this will involve just buying a coffee and driving around. We take a lot of drives as our dates. It works even if we're taking our daughter. We can just put her in the car seat, she's happy. And it's so much fun. And it costs basically no money but gas. Another thing that we like to do sometimes is we'll have a date inside. We'll just take a date in our house once we put our daughter to bed. Sometimes we'll have a game night, which he's more prone to enjoy than I am. But once I get started in a game, I end up liking it every time and I'm really happy that I did it. And so that's just a simple tip that'll save a lot of money because you don't need to go out to eat and spend tons of money if you don't have it to go on a date. The beautiful part is just spending time with the person that you love. And so you can do that without spending any money, which I think is fabulous. 
Number 10 is to print everything on automatic payment that you can. This has saved us a lot of money because we used to get so many fees for late fees. That's just ridiculous extra spending money that you don't need to spend. So print everything on automatic payment that you can. My last tip for you is to just learn to live on less. When I think of the 1950s, I think so many people were living on one income. And I think the reality of it is because they didn't need the boat, they didn't need the motor home, they didn't need that stuff if they couldn't afford it, they just lived on less. And when we learn to live on less, we save so much money and it's very possible. I think there's so many things we don't actually need to have a fabulous and satisfying life. So ladies, those are my 11 tips for you today. I hope that they give you some ideas. I hope that some of these were new to you and happy homemaking. I'll see you next Saturday in my next video. Bye.